So over the past few days, you have started to see some bullish actions coming back in the Singapore banks, right? And of course, they are DBS, uh, OCBC, and even UOB, right? So where are we right now? So I've covered the banks you know, once every month uh, just to give an update because there are a lot of people looking at the Singapore banks and you know what are some of the levels that have uh, came out over the past few weeks? Are there any key target levels whereby some selling can actually happen again? Have we breached some of those resistance level whereby you know there could potentially be a bit more upside, but to where? All right, hey guys. Joey here, top tier miser trader in Philips Securities. And in this video, very quickly, we'll do a quick uh, run through of the Singapore banks. We'll look at the charts, dive into some of the key levels, the trend, short term, and the longer term as well uh, for these three Singapore local banks. And that would be DBS, OCBC, and even UOB. So you want to find out about the outlook for the banks. Make sure you watch this video all the way to the end and smash the subscribe button as well. That will really help out the channel. Okay, first up is DBS Bank, right? DBS Bank right here trading at about $32.58. So in the previous video, just about a month back, uh, I mentioned that we were actually below this very critical resistance level, which would be that $32 level. You can see there was a little bit of support here. It was pretty much the support level last year, all right? And we kind of broke down this $32 support. You can see we actually uh, traded down to this $30.50, uh, rebounded back up, went back down, swing up and down. All right, and this thirty-two dollars was that resistance level whereby we have been trading below for about two months, right? Since like uh, early of May, right? More than two months below that thirty-two resistance level, right? But then again, we got some support that came out right over here at that $30.50. Look at this right here. So as I mentioned, we kind of like hit it there, a couple of rebounds, rebounds, rebounds just last last week as well. And uh, that was pretty much the range from about $30.50 to about $32. That would be like about a $1.50 range. And what happens is that over the past few days, right, we managed to break, all right, this $32 level right here. As I mentioned, more than a month, right, for more than the two months, we were below this 32, but over the past few days, we managed to break this $32 level, which also is where the 100 days moving average line is. So that could be a sign of strength in the terms of the short term, whereby, you know, as we break a key resistance level that we have been consolidating below for like more than two months, and now, you know, buyers are prepared to take out the entire sellers at that resistance level, that could be a sign of strength whereby buyers are starting to come back up, right? But where can we potentially hit to? So you can see that after breaking 32, uh, we managed to see a bit of upside all the way to near 33 and some profit taking is being seen. So I would say that the next target would be the next resistance level and that would be somewhere around this level. That would be the $33.50. Look at this right over here. So this was pretty much uh, back to March April, May for like about two months, we were actually, you know, kind of consolidating below this 3350. So that could be the upside whereby some profit taking can actually come back again. All right. And in terms of the short term, what we're going to look for is that, you know, apart from breaking that 32 level, you can see that the short term moving average, this 20 days moving average, it was pretty much, you know, I mean, like pointing down as, as we broke the 32. And then we started to flatten out. Look at this, right? So the green line, the short term 20 days moving average started to flatten out. So it just means like there's a bit of a consolidation in, the, in sideways movement, which is the case, right? From 3050 to 32. But right now, as it broke that 32, you can see this green line, all right, is starting to slope back up. So there's a sign of strength in the short term as well. And of course, I think if we stay above that $32, eventually uh, this green line will cross back. That's what we call a bullish crossover. Green line going back above the red line, the 100 days moving average. So that could be a sign of a more momentum as well. Those are the trends slowly turning up in the short to mid term as well. All right, so just think about these levels, all right? Targets around 3350, that's potentially where some selling can come back again. The next bank, OCBC, trading at about $12.59. So for this bank, you know, for many, many months since last year, November, I talked about this really, really strong support. So you've got in near the support level, that level whereby we have seen multiple rebounds. Great, all right? You have probably right the rebound again, and now you can think about taking some profit. So what is that level? Well, that level is the $12 level. Right over here, you can see that, you know, since last year, October, we have seen a couple of rebounds. These are what we call uh, zones whereby you can time your entry on dips because 
first of all, it is in a sideways movement, and this support has proven to uh, to hold right since like about October last year. For about eight to ten months, we have seen a couple of rebounds right over here. So it rebounded, you can see a couple of touches, rebounded, rebounded, we nearly rebounded, even like last last week, rebounded. So that $12, maybe $12.10, $12.20 around there, uh, that's potentially where some bargain hunting can come back again, which it did, right? So now that it has rebounded, uh, where can we potentially head to before some selling can come back again? Well, let's see where we are. So let me go ahead to draw uh, the targets again and all the way up to the next resistance, which is about the $12.90 right up here. So it was a little bit of a support about 12 80 to 1290. If you can give a little bit of leeway, I think right over here, right? Um 1290 to maybe about 12. 70 all right i mean look look at this right here you can see that this is where we headed to in june all right um last month we sold off and now we are back here as well so that's around that 1270 so 1270 all right 1270 to 1290 if i can maybe just give a range to you because it's not that clear or it's not that clear because it was a little bit higher previously in april but the resistance have you know gone a little bit down to about 1270 so the range should be right over here i think anything near here uh, potentially from 1270 to 1290 i think that's where uh, some profit taking can actually come back again so you can choose to maybe you know lock in some profits wait for a pullback again towards the 12 and you can write the upside again i mean in terms of the rebound like we have seen over the past eight to ten months right so this is ocbc taking a look of the level whereby you know some profit taking can actually come back again right so after 1290 if we do break this 1290 level great then i think we might retest uh the previous high that we've seen in february right before the sell down and that would be around that 13 dollars and 20 cents okay next one will be uob trading at about 28 dollars and 47 cents right here so you can see that for uob over the past like two to three months we have found some support around here and that would be around that 27 dollars so 27 was a little bit of a resistance level you can see right here when we broke up uh, somewhere in october last year we shot all the way up so that would be that resistance which has turned support and we have hit it there over the past two weeks and saw a pretty good rebound right but this level i want to share with you would be this very critical level that would be the resistance 28 dollars and 50 cents you can see that since like you know april or right, april or early may we have traded below this 28.50 a couple of times where we neared it and sellers came back and just pushed prices down right for more than two months right we have been trading below it so that's a very key level that we want to break right for more upside to actually happen right and in terms of the 20 days moving average like i mentioned for uh dbs you can see that this 20 days moving average was also like pointing down all right as, as the market weakened it was pointing down we went lower but then this 20 days moving average started to flatten out right over here flatten out over the past like one two months and now we are starting to see some signs of strength as uh you know this 20 days moving average is starting to slope up with prices above it all right how ultimately right we still need to you know clearly um stay above or even break above this 28 dollars and 50 cents you can see like yesterday was a pretty good bullish day right we actually closed at about $28.64. So not too bad. We close at 28.64, which is above 28.50. All right. So that's a good thing, but we want to hold above over the next few days. I think we can hold above 28.50 over the next few days. We close above, we stay above it. I think that'd be great. Now uh, we could potentially see some short term uh, momentum coming back, maybe all the way up to the next uh, upside resistance level. And that would be maybe somewhere around that psychological. $30, you can see right away here, that was pretty much the resistance uh, since March to April this year. All right, so this is UOB, some signs of the short-term trends starting to turn up, but we still need a few more days to see you know, whether it plays out, whether it can hold above this 28.50. I think this level is key right now. We must stay above all right, for the upside reversal to actually happen in the short term. So yes, that's it, guys. I've covered very quickly the three Singapore banks, DBS, OCBC, and even UOB. So I hope you have a clearer picture of what are some of the key levels that came out in terms of the short-term trend, and more importantly, where can we actually see some selling or some profit-taking gain and where you could also think about you know taking some profits if he actually hates that all right so if you want to learn more a little bit on like the strategy i call it the one good trend strategy right because in this video we didn't really talk much about strategy and i'm just analyzing the charts right now but if you want to learn more about the framework behind my one good trend strategy all right which is pretty much what we're using right here and also how we have a system to guide us on entry and exit and to alert us on not 
just stocks like this but also other more you know high probability winning stocks then you can attend one of free uh, web class like a webinar that coming up real soon i'll put the link uh, around this video or below it click on the link to attend this uh, web class where i'll share with you a little bit more on my strategy and system all right so thank you so much for watching joey here help me to give a like on this video that will really help out the channel and smash the subscribe button so that you will not miss out on videos like this thank you so much joey here i'll see you in the next video take care